statement, the Minister of State for Health, Minister Norman Lamb. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Speaker. With permission, <coughs> I should like to report to the House on a new 10-year grant uh, to the Thalidomide Trust to help them find more personalised ways uh, of meeting the health needs of thalidomide survivors. The current three-year grant, which comes to an end in March 2013, was introduced by the previous government uh, as a pilot scheme. Its aim was to enable the Thalidomide Trust <coughs> and its members to, to, enable the, uh, uh, to, to explore more innovative ways of preventing further deterioration in the health of thalidomide victims and to help preserve their independence. This government is committed to improving our comes for all disabled people and to supporting them to live independent lives. This is why we are pleased to be able to continue to support the excellent work begun by the pilot scheme through this 10-year commitment. Over the next 10 years, the grant will be in the region of £80 million. It will be paid on an annual basis, rising each year in line with inflation. I was privileged to speak on this very subject on my very first day as in as a Health Minister uh, and then met with the Thalidomide Trust and the National Advisory Council to the Trust, along with the Honourable Member for Elmet and Rothwell. They impressed upon me uh, the complex and highly specialised needs that thalidomiders have, particularly as they approach older age. At the meeting, members of the Trust and a number of thalidomiders present stressed the need for certainty uh, and that any future grant would need to be for longer than just three years. I'm delighted that we are able to give them this certainty. Many thalidomiders have had to use their bodies to compensate for the damage to their arms or legs uh, uh, in such a way as to cause severe musculoskeletal problems, including lower back pain, sciatica, damage to the coccyx area, uh, and shoulder pain and stiffness. Treatments to relieve these symptoms, such as massage and physiotherapy, not only help to maintain their independence, but also often mean that they are able to stay in work. The Thalidomide Trust have provided us with evaluation reports for the first two years of the pilot scheme. I have read with interest how they have invested the money, and it is clear from the reports that this scheme is the best way to continue to meet the complex needs of thalidomide survivors. One recipient of the grant has improved her independence uh, by installing a table that rises and falls by remote control, enabling her to reduce overstrain on her muscles. Another recipient describes how regular physiotherapy and visits to the gym paid for by the grant has led to him losing weight, relieving stress on his joints, reducing pain and improving his mental well-being. A small number of people said that they had reduced their need for prescription painkillers and had reduced the frequency with which they needed to see their GP. Uh, the reasons for this are varied, for example successful surgery, lifestyle changes and improved access to complementary medicines, but all of them were linked in some way to the use of the grant. This continued funding will help individual thalidomiders to maintain control over their own health needs because they are the real experts in what really makes a difference. Uh, there will be clear principles for the use of the money. The money must only be used for health-related needs and it cannot be used to duplicate support provided through a different source such as personal health budgets. This grant must also only be used for the benefit of thalidomide survivors living in England. Separately, the devolved administrations will each consider how they will support thalidomiders after the end of the current three-year pilot, which is in March next year. Naturally, the Department of Health will review this scheme annually to ensure that it remains the most appropriate use of funding and the best way of distributing it to those who need it. The Trust will use its extensive expertise <coughs> and knowledge of its members to distribute the funds to thalidomide survivors within England. And, and, and it, is this, it is at this point that I would like to pay tribute to the Thalidomide Trust. The contribution of both the Trust and the National Advisory Council to the Trust, many of whom are here today in the public gallery, to hear the statement, 
cannot be overstated. The Trust uses its expert knowledge to provide invaluable support to survivors of the thalidomide disaster and their families, uh, whilst the National Advisory Council works tirelessly, despite their own impairments, in the cause of all thalidomiders. Finally, Mr Speaker, I would like to reiterate the regret and the deep sympathy first expressed three years ago uh, by the former Minister for Health, the, the former member for North Warwickshire, uh, and we acknowledge both the physical hardship and the emotional difficulties faced by both the children affected and by their families as a result of this drug and for the challenges that many continue to endure, often on a daily basis. I commend this statement to the House and wish everyone, including all thalidomiders, a very happy Christmas. Yeah. Ms Kendall. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for the advanced copy of his, his statement. Thalidomide survivors waited far too long for governments over many years to address the appalling physical and emotional difficulties they faced as a result of thalidomide prescribed by the NHS from 1958 to 1961. The last government took the first steps towards addressing this unacceptable situation. In January 2010, the then Minister for Health rightly offered our sincere regret and deep sympathy for the injury and suffering endured by all those whose expectant mothers took the thalidomide drug, and I want to repeat that sincere regret and sympathy today. The previous government also acknowledged the urgent need for extra help for thalidomide survivors to meet their care and support needs by putting in place a three-year pilot scheme. This pilot, as the Minister has said, has helped survivors improve the quality of their life and their ability to cope with their increasing loss of mobility and independence as they get older, helping them to buy and put in place the things they say make the most difference to their lives. So I want to welcome the Minister's announcement that the Government will continue this scheme for 10 more years with a grant in the region of £80 million. This will mean a huge amount to the 431 thalidomide survivors still living in the UK today. As the Thalidomide Trust says, this will allow one survivor with no arms to buy the special adaptations she's been unable to afford and a man with no legs to make a down payment on a van adapted so he can drive it from his wheelchair. And it will allow a deaf thalidomide survivor to continue to employ, employ someone to be her signer when she goes out so she can retain her confidence and her ability to remain active and mobile. I have a number of questions I hope the Minister will be able to answer about the scheme. He'll be aware that Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland made proportionate contributions to the fund set up by the last Government. Will the devolved administra administrations make similar contributions to the fund he has announced today? The Minister says the grant will be reviewed annually. There may be some concern that this isn't as stable as some survivors would like. Will he guarantee that the views, needs and concerns of survivors are absolutely at the heart of these reviews? Will he explain why he thinks they need an annual review, not a three-year review as under the previous Government? Will the reviews specifically look at the increasing needs of thalidomide survivors as they get older? Evidence collected over the past two years confirms that their health and mobility is deteriorating rapidly now that they've reached their 50s. And because of these increasing needs, will the Minister today commit to ensuring there will certainly be no less funding in the years ahead? Mr Speaker, I want to finish, by, as the Ministers did, by thanking and paying tribute to the work of the Thalidomide Trust, its National Advisory Council and to all those campaigners who have fought for successive governments to face up to their responsibilities. I know members on both sides of the House sincerely regret how badly thalidomide survivors were let down and that we will strive to ensure that never happens again. Yeah. 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 
Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Speaker. And I uh, appreciate uh, the uh, Shadow Minister's support for the announcement uh, today. And she's absolutely right that uh, these people waited far too long for <coughs> an acknowledgement of the uh, tragedy uh, and for action, uh, practical action. And I acknowledge absolutely, as I did in my statement, the action taken by the previous <coughs> government to initiate the pilot scheme and to the expression of regret by the former uh, minister. Um, uh, I think one of the things that is so powerful about the way in which this scheme works, uh, as designed by the original pilot, is that it gives maximum power to the individual uh, to determine what their priorities are, what their needs are, and to be able to respond uh, to those needs. And, and, and it means that the money can be used in a whole host of different ways, as, as uh, the Honourable Member described in her statement. Uh, the Honourable Member raised questions about the devolved administration. Uh, and that's a, a, an absolutely fair point, and we must be concerned equally about those people, uh, those thalidomiders in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The devolved administrations didn't feel able here and now to commit to the 10-year period, but I think they are fully committed to seeking to continue help, um, and we will work closely with them to ensure that uh, those people, those individuals, aren't left behind uh, in any way. Um, she rightly raised the question of the uh, annual review. I think it's simply a question of proper accountability. The Trust has done a brilliant job, and I acknowledge their work. Uh, it's a t completely responsible organisation which knows better than anyone how best to deploy the resources that are available. But it's right, and I think they absolutely acknowledge that they should be held to account for how money, public money is spent. But there is absolutely no intent at all to question the purpose of this. We want to give the certainty, and I repeat that, that this 10-year uh, period uh, provides for index linked so that the value of the money from the pilot scheme is maintained throughout that period of time. It is simply to ensure that it still makes sense that, that this is the best possible way of using that available resource. But I have every confidence that it will be. And uh, at the heart of those re reviews will, as she asked, be the needs of those thalidomiders who benefit from the money. Uh, and we will not let the those people down in terms of this commitment that we are making uh, today, and the funding will be maintained. I think it's right because we don't know, as she talked about the deteriorating health, and because the body has been put to such extraordinary strain. And talking to thalidomiders earlier today, uh, it's remarkable what the body has been able to do, and often in the absence of uh, limbs. Um, but that's put an enormous strain on the body, and, and that wear and tear is having its effect now. Uh, so we don't know what the prognosis is going forward, and I think therefore it's right after a 10-year period to uh, take stock and to see what their needs are now. But the commitment to these people must remain. Mr Andrew Jones. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. On the 23rd of November this year, the first ever memorial to Thalidomide victims was unveiled in Harrogate. It was a tree uh, planted and, and plaque unveiled to mark the 50th anniversary of the withdrawal of the drug. Uh, the Thalidomide victims present and the unveiling was, was carried out by Mr Guy Tweedy who is a Harrogate resident and leading Thalidomide campaigner. I think the victims have waited a very long time for their recognition uh, and including financial recognition. I welcome very much the Minister's comments this morning, uh, particularly his comments about uh, the certainty required of looking over a 10-year period, the challenges that victims face as they grow older, and the sheer bravery that some of them have had to face uh, during the course of their lives. Um, can I just simply urge him to do all he can to support this special group? Well, I'm very grateful to my honourable friend for that uh, question, uh, and absolutely, uh, I commit from the government's perspective to do everything uh, that we can to support this group of people. I think, as a society, we owe it to them uh, to support them uh, uh, in, in often very difficult circumstances. And he's right to uh, note the bravery uh, that they have shown, uh, not just the individuals but their families as well, uh, in facing up to this. Mr Frank Field. May I pay tribute to those who are victims of this drug and the trust that so admirably serves them. 
May I thank the Minister for his statement as well today. But might he tell the House, uh, how did he fix upon this actual sum? Was it the sum that the Trust does? Um, does it meet all their demands, or is uh, there are other forces at work? Minister. Uh, well, I, I thank uh, the right honourable member for uh, the uh, question, uh, and uh, he's right to pay tribute uh, to the work of the trust um, uh, over many years now. Uh, we've, we've worked on the basis of the amount of money that was provided as part of the pilot scheme, which appeared to work very well, doesn't meet all of the needs. Uh, many individuals are getting help in other ways, some with personal budgets and so on, uh, but I think it's acknowledged that this is a massive help and support and gives them the reassurance for a lengthy period of time that there will be continuing support available to them. Mr Richard Fuller. Thank you, Mr Speaker. May I join other honourable and right honourable members in praising the dedicated, intelligent and sensitive leadership of the Thalidomide Trust over many years. And I know the news from the Minister today will be welcomed by Thalidomide survivors across the United Kingdom, including in my constituency and in particular a friend of mine and his uh, wonderful family. Uh, the issue for many survivors of Thalidomide is a, a pursuit of a, an independent and everyday, uh, everyday life. Can the Minister advise me and advise the House why the decision was made for a 10-year grant rather than a lifetime grant, as a lifetime grant would have eliminated all uncertainty? I would be very interested in the Minister's comments. Well, uh, I, I thank uh, my honourable friend for, for that question, and, and we had a genuine uh, judgment to make about this. I wanted, on the one hand, to provide a good deal of certainty for a lengthy period of time, but because uh, this is, in a way, a unique group of people, uh, and we are watching as their health deteriorates, uh, and we don't yet know what the prognosis is for the rest of their lives. And I think it, it, it's therefore, it might have been dangerous to allocate a sum of money now for the rest of their lives. For all we know, that their needs may grow considerably. Uh, and I think it's right, therefore, to take stock in 10 years' time and make a judgment at that time about what their needs are at that stage. Mr Jim Cunningham. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I have met victims of the Polidolomite over many, many years, and I had the privilege of being Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Honourable Member for North Warwickshire when he introduced the pilot scheme. So I well and really understand some of the difficulties the Minister's faced, and therefore I would like to congratulate him, because I know that was a difficult thing, decision to take. And it's a very emotional decision to actually take when you actually talk to those people. So the minister should be congratulated and the trust for their efforts and tenacity over many, many years. Well, I'm very grateful to the Honourable Member for, for that contribution. And it, as I indicated in my statement, it was my very first full day in the job when I was faced with having to respond to uh, an adjournment debate in Westminster Hall. And it was uh, the presence of so many people, uh, Thilidabiders, uh, at that debate, which was a very, very powerful message to me about the need for us to sort of face up to our responsibility to uh, support those individuals. Well, stride. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I very much welcome my honourable friend's uh, statement, which I know will mean a huge amount to fill in my sufferers up and down the country, including those in my constituency. And I would like to pay tribute to Ruth Daniels, one of my constituents who has campaigned very hard on this particular issue. Um, but the Minister uh, mentioned that money would be made available for physical uh, health needs. Could he also confirm that it will be made available for those suffering from mental effects as a result of thalidomide? Well, I'm very grateful to my honourable friend for that uh, question, and uh, equally, Ruth Daniels and many others uh, have campaigned long and hard for justice, essentially, and it has taken too long uh, for uh, that to be properly acknowledged. But yes, I can absolutely confirm that the uh, the money can be used for any health-related matter, and it's absolutely the case that uh, mental health can be affected as well as physical health, uh, and that is uh, just as legitimate as any other health need. Thomas Doherty. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The um, Minister will be aware that the Trust has also called for the manufacturer to finally acknowledge their culpability, something that they have repeatedly failed to do. Could the Minister 
update the House as to what his assessment is of the likelihood of getting those cowards to finally take responsibility. Minister Lamb. Well, I thank the Honourable Member for that question. And talking earlier to the Thalidomide Trust, uh, they have a deep frustration shared by me uh, about the failure, ultimately, of the manufacturer to face up, ultimately, to their responsibilities. Uh, and I, I can't uh, provide a positive update that indicates that they are about to do what they should do, uh, but I think all of us would uh, have, be of the same view, that they ought to acknowledge that, uh, with, and without delay. Cathy Jamieson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I also thank the Minister for uh, responding so positively, and indeed it was my Westminster Hall debate on the first day in his job uh, when he came along, and I am so glad that he has listened to the views of the Thalidomiders. Can I also join in the tribute to the Thalidomide Trust, particularly Mike Arjay and Liz Buckle, who first brought the information to me which persuaded me that a debate was needed. But could I ask the Minister, because he has mentioned the position in the devolved administrations, particularly in relation to Scotland for an update on the discussions he's had with the Cabinet Secretary for Health and has he had any indication as to when a statement or an announcement will be brought forward by the Scottish Government so that the thalidomide victims in Scotland can also have the same peace of mind as those in England? Well, I thank the Honourable Member for that question. I pay tribute to her for her campaigning on this, along with several other Honourable Members, because that's all paid a part in ensuring that uh, their needs are acknowledged uh, properly. Uh, I, I can't uh, tell the Honourable Member that there will be a statement at any particular time. Uh, I have confirmed that we are in uh, touch with them, uh, and I think there is an absolute uh, desire to help. Uh, but I will write to the Honourable Member to provide as much of an update as I can uh, following this debate. Order. 